Hi friends! I'm so proud of all the work I saw today for our first day back um, from April break. So great job today, boys and girls, with all of the activities you chose. I really like seeing that friends are practicing their beginning sounds. And um, they went around their house looking for animals and found some stuffed animals or toys maybe. And you tried to match the beginning sound with what the toy or the animal was. So maybe some friends found zebras around their house. What letter do you think zebra starts with? What is that beginning sound, z, z? And we know z is for the letter z. So if you found a zebra, you would have put the z card in front of it. So great job practicing those beginning sounds, and I hope we keep up um, practicing them because it's very important when it comes to our reading skills. And when we go up to kindergarten, we're going to need to know our letter sounds, so keep practicing that. Um, I also saw friends that were practicing their math skills today and doing those worksheets that I gave you. So great job if you're practicing your adding skills and your subtraction skills. Um, it's very important to keep practicing that as well. So I'm very proud of those friends that are loving to do those math worksheets. That's a great thing. Um, Another thing I saw today that was really cool were um, some paper bag puppets. I saw lots of friends that chose to do paper bag puppets and make animals. And I also saw friends that made animals out of Play-Doh today and used beads to be creative and make all different kinds of animals. So great job with that, boys and girls. Keep up the great work. You're doing amazing learning at home. So I'm so, so proud of you. Um, for today's topic of the zoo, when I did the question of the day this morning, I was looking at those live cameras from the San Diego Zoo and I saw the penguins, I was looking at the penguin camera, and it made me think about our penguin study that we did um, in January when we learned all about penguins. So I looked in the, the library that I brought home and I did have a penguin book, so it's called Plenty of Penguins. And I'm going to be reading this book today. And after I read the story, I'm going to be doing a directed drawing, um, a penguin drawing. So we're going to draw a penguin together after I read the book. So if you'd like to do that, stick around after the story. This is called Plenty of Penguins by Sonia W. Black, illustrated by Turi McCombie. Plenty of Penguins. What's black and white and as cute as can be? A penguin. That's me. Do you want to meet my family? Penguins are big and penguins are small. We have sharp pointy feathers, but that's not all. We can have stripes or spots here and there, long bushy brows or spiky hair. They look all different. There are even bright colors that some of us share. What colors do you see? I see white and black and orange and yellow. I live at the South Pole. It is covered with ice, ice, ice. I think ice is very nice. Hey, those two words rhyme, ice and nice. We have homes in other places too. South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and Peru. Those are all the different places that the penguins live. And these signs say all the different places. Peru, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. We cannot fly. We knew that. Up, 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 and away. That is strange for a bird, wouldn't you say? We waddle and hop and have lots of fun. We swim and we dive down deep one by one. How many penguins do you see on this page? Let's count. One, two, three, four, and it looks like one is already in the water, so that would be five. We find many little fish, squid and shrimp to eat. They're, they are mmm mmm good. Yum, yum, what a treat. But we have to watch out. We might become meals for killer whales and leopard seals. There's a leopard seal and there's a killer whale. On land, we live in great big groups called colonies. They are also known as rookeries. So they're called colonies or rookeries when they're in big groups. 
We make nests and we rest. We lay eggs and we keep them warm. Do you see the egg? And we watch and we wait and we keep them from harm until the eggs hatch. Hooray, hooray! New baby penguin chicks are here to stay. Baby penguin chicks. The end. So I hope you enjoyed our penguin story. You might have heard some similar facts that we already knew about penguins since we learned so much about them. Um, I'm going to move on to our directed drawing for today. I'll move our camera a little closer so you can see better. All right. So if you want to do the drawing, you can grab some white paper and your crayon box or some markers. And I'm going to start with black um, for the outline of the penguin. So you're going to draw a straight line across, right about in the middle of the page. Just like that. So go ahead and draw a straight line just across. And then we're going to do a big curve up and around to connect to the other side. Ready? Big curve up and around to connect to the other side. Go ahead and draw your big curve. Next, we're going to draw the penguin's wings. So we need two ovalish shapes on each side of the penguin's body. So here's one oval shape. And here's another oval shape. And those are the penguin's wings. Next, we're going to draw the penguin's eyes. So what shape do you think we need for the penguin's eyes? If you said circles, you're correct. So we're going to draw two circles, one and two. And who remembers what we do to make those eyes look a little bit more real? We color in the bottom just a little bit. So just like this. See how I colored in the bottom? He looks like he's looking down. Next, we're going to draw the penguin's nose. Can you take a guess on what shape you think the penguin's nose should be? I'll give you a hint. It has three sides and three points. It's a triangle. And we're going to do an upside down triangle. So the point is going to go down for his nose. Next, we're going to draw the penguin's belly. So for his belly, the same way we did this big curve, now we just have to do a smaller curve inside of his body right under the nose, back down. Okay, so just like this. Watch me first. And there's his belly. So just go ahead and try and make a, a smaller curve than you did last time. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying our best. After you make your curve, you're going to draw his feet. And this part's easy because we're only going to make lines. So for his feet, I'm going to make one line down and two lines on each side. So you should have one line down and two lines coming off. I'll do the next one a little closer for you to see. One line down and then two lines on each side. Okay, I think it's time to color him. So we will color him in. And for his body, do you remember what color the penguin's bodies are? Black. If you said black, you're correct. So I'm going to go around his whole body and color him in. And his wings, because his wings are black too. Okay. His belly can stay white because the penguin's bellies are white. And for his beak, take a guess on the color. What color do you think will color his beak? Orange. If you said orange, you are correct. So we're going to color in the little triangle orange for his beak. I think he's starting to look a little more like a penguin. All right, next we can draw the ground for him. Or maybe we can draw ice. We'll pretend it's ice. So 
since we know penguins live in cold climates. So we'll pretend that's ice, and I'm gonna leave the bottom part white since ice is like a clear color, we'll use white. Next, we'll draw the sky behind him. And of course, I'll use blue for the sky. And at the top, we'll add little details. We could add some birds in the sky. And we can add a sun. Some marks to make it a sun. And that's it. So there's my penguin drawing. I'll write my name on the bottom and the year so I know when I made it. And if you stuck around to do the penguin drawing, please send me a picture of yours because I would love to see it. Enjoy the rest of your day, boys and girls. Bye-bye.